Hello and thank you for watching. My name is John and this is Crash Course in Maya version 2011 skinning series. Section 4, Rigid and Interactive Bindings. In this video I want to discuss rigid skinning, flexors, and interactive skinning. In this scene I created a simple animation with a simple piston. When the wheel turns you can see the uh, joint going with it. And when I go to wireframe you can see the joints acting as they should following the piston. However, you can see that the mesh themselves are not following, so let's just skin it. I'm going to select the joint, select the piston, skin, bind skin, rigid bind. Now when I push play, you'll see that object following as it should. I'm going to do the rest. I'm going to do the same for the piston itself. And now that you can see the main piston and the top of the piston following as it should. However, as you can see at the base of the piston, it's going through that, which is not realistic at all. So I'm going to bind that to the lower. So bind skin, rigid bind, and now when I push play, you will see that the piston looks awesome. There's something simple, something quick. It's pumping as it should, the wheel is turning, and everything looks fantastic. But this is the standard model. Because it's a standard mechanical model, rigid binding, it should work really nice with uh, with higher complex models because it doesn't take as much RAM, much memory. In this scene, I have three tails. When I push play, you can see the joints of the tails actually going back and forth, just wagging. But the tails themselves are not doing anything. I'm going to attach a smooth skin to the left tail and a rigid skin to the other two. There we go. And now when I push play, you'll see that the smooth skin acts as it should. Everything's smooth. But when it comes to the uh, rigid bind, you'll see the sharp edges that the rigid bind has. That's because only one joint, oh sorry, one vertex will only be affected by one joint at a time. Unlike the smooth bind over here, that has a few uh, bumps but still is smooth nonetheless, that can have multiple joints attached and affecting it. We're going to use flexors to actually fix that. So on the far right one, I'm going to select the joints, select the hierarchy, and then add flexors. Flexors are actually attached to the joints, not to the object. So joint, hierarchy, skin, edits rigid uh, skin, create flexor. You're going to see a window pop up with flexor type. It's going to be lattice, sculptor, or sculpt, and joint cluster. I will not be going into detail on sculpt, uh, joint cluster tonight, so just lattice and sculpt. Uh, the lattice options are just like the deformer. You can see the subdivisions, which will be discussed later. There's also uh, bones and joints selection options just like uh, skinning. You can either select the joints or select the entire hierarchy and the same with the bones. In this case, a lattice with uh, add selected joints because I selected the hierarchy will work fine. When this happens, you will see that the cages are created, one on each joint. When I right click and go to lattice points, I can actually physically move the lattice points. And when I move the lattice points, the mesh moves with it. When I push play, you'll see that the lattice points move with the uh, joints themselves. And when I pause at a tip like that, I go to uh, wire, wire shaded, you will see that the, let me hide the dynamics, you will see that, pick two, you will see that the, uh, the edge still there is not as apparent as this one over here. Now we're going to make it increasingly smooth with the same tools, not doing anything different. Because the uh, flexors are actually attached to the bones, to find them you have to expand the, uh, the bone chain. So shift select that plus sign will open the entire chain. At the bottom you will see your flexors right here. You will see they are very standard, like the lattice, they have the lattice cage right here and you have the lattice base cage right here, which I hid. And when you move the lattice cage, 
stuff happens. When you lose the lattice space, stuff happens. But when you move the group, nothing happens. At least, so you think. I'm actually going to scale the uh, lattice cage to cover more ground. So when I select the group, I want to scale it up. Select the next group, scale that up. And select the last group, and scale that up. Now, I want to hide the uh, deformers again, push play, and see how it looks. You can see the smoothness exponentially better than the rigid, the original rigid. You can see that the untumor ridden uh, curve, very smooth, very fine. That's crap. And this tumor ridden um, smooth bind. Still, the smooth bind is better than the rigid bind at basic, but when you start adding flexors, you can actually have a lot of control. I believe, I cannot confirm, but I believe adding this many flexors on this type of model will actually make um, the rigid bind completely more expensive than the smooth bind, but I cannot confirm. It's just a, just a theory. So, now that you saw the lattice cage, what about the sculpt? So select the brute, go to hierarchy, skin, binds, no, edit, ridges, collect flexor, sculpt, and I'll just create. And now you see this funnel looking, I don't know, straw bending, whatever thing would be. But either way, when you create a, a flexor, it creates a deformer that's attached to a joint. And just like any, de uh, any deformer, you'll see the base deformer, let me show everything again, and the origin for the uh, sculpt. So when you move the sculpt object, you'll see that the mesh is moving. When you move the origin, you'll see the mesh is moving as well. When you scale the, uh, the sculpt, it'll actually work with that too. And when you push play, it'll move very nicely with your rigid bind. Next I'll be discussing uh, interactive skinning. You'll see that I have a very similar uh, scene, a tail, when I push play it wags. Interactive skinning uh, basically allows you to skin without having to paint weights immediately, of course, uh, that is. And allows you to use um, gizmos and manipulators to get the weights that you're looking for. Uh, they work really well with uh, straight edges or straight objects such as arms to get the base idea. Uh, fingers, it looks uh, really nice, and tails like this one. So in this case, I'm going to select the root, select the hierarchy, toggle select your object, skin, bind skin, interactive skin bind options. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to reset the options. You see a lot of stuff is very similar. You see the joint, uh, the bind to, the bind method. You see the skinning method and your max influences. That's all just like a smooth binding because it's based off a of smooth binding. What's different is your include method. Closest volume by minimum weight. I'm not going to worry about that too much, but the volume type is what I'll be t looking at. There's cylinder and there's capsule. This is the gizmo, your manipulator, that's going to be affecting the skin, how you can easily uh, work with your skinning. In this case, I'm just going to use capsule. I want to push bind skin. Now, as strange as it may be, I had everything selected, but I only have one capsule. That is because this is the only one I'll be manipulating for now. Be careful if you by deselecting, because if you deselect, you're going to lose your manipulator. If you go to your outliner, you will see your manipulator fired right here. And this is what happens if you deselect. You will see that the uh, everything is skinned, and when I push play, everything is skinned right there. But when you start, when you push your, uh, when you select your uh, your bones, they're gone. It's gone. Don't fret. Don't freak out. To actually find and work with your manipulators again, to work with your gizmos. You want to select your joints, select your hierarchy, skin, 
and its smooth skin because it's based off of the smooth skin. An interactive skin bind tool. Go to the options. When that happens, you're going to have uh, your tool settings pop up. And just like painting weights, you're going to see your window right here. And you can select your different uh, your bones and you can see your um, capsules. Now to work and manipulate with the capsules, you just select on any one of the sides, like this green one right here, and move it. I'm middle mouse dragging right now for moving. Or you can select on the blue, move it. Select on the red, move it. And you can see the color of everything changes. I'm going to go to smooth shading and you'll see an actual color representation based on this gradient down here. It is very similar to the smooth binding gradient, same concept, and you can add a color, take away a color, and modify the values to your heart content. Now when uh, you're done, you just, you're done. It's just that, that's the interactive binding right there. And you can see everything is bound just as it is. So that does it for this video. The next video, uh, which is section 5 deformers, I'll be discussing deformers using lattice, clusters, nonlinear deformers such as bend, flare, sine, squash, twist, and wave, blend shapes, which is uh, very commonly used for facial animation, jiggle, sculpt, and soft modification, wire, and wrap. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.